All right, guys, so we're going to take a look at the control software for the iGUS Rebel robot as well as the AR robot. So as we can see on the screen, there's a simulated arm. If I take my um, cursor and click on the screen here, I can actually use the up and down arrows to move the robot on the Y and negative Y axis. If I use the left and right arrow keys, I can actually move the robot on the X axis and if I hold the space bar and use the up and down arrows, I can move it up and down on the Z axis. If I use the WASD keys, I can actually change the Euler angles. So I can actually change the orientation of that end effector to rotate around that ball. So all those things are moving that ball around. You can see in the info box it explains all that if you forget. In addition to moving things around with the arrow keys, you can use these radio buttons to select the orientation. In this case, I want it to point in the X direction. Maybe I want to send that to X50, Y negative 20, and Z55. If I do this, you can see the robot goes to that location. Let's say I want to send it over on 20 on the Y. It's the same uh, location but reciprocated over there. In addition, I can actually move each joint around individually. You can see I'm grabbing joint one over here and moving it. Here I move joint two and joint three. If I click the reset button, it's gonna reset the position of that robot. Another thing to note is that as I'm moving that around, you can see the location is displayed at the top. So if I were to, for example, move J1, you can see the end position in the X, Y, Z is shown here. In addition, you can see the angles highlighted at the top here, and those are all the angles of each joint. You can look at it on the left side, or you can look at it at the top here. Now, moving the robot around is pretty useful, but what if I wanted to simulate a bunch of instructions happening at once? What I can do is I can actually open up this panel here, and maybe I load up something I've already created, like front to back, which is a simple two movements. I can go ahead and toggle off run on robot. We're not connected to a robot. And I can go ahead and run those waypoints. You can see that the robot's executing our two waypoints. And when I do this, I can actually test to make sure that the robot's not gonna crash and go to a location that it can't actually get to. If we take our arrow keys again, we can actually start to move the robot back in the X direction. And eventually, we're gonna hit a point that the robot actually can't go. It can't go here because it's actually trying to spin a joint to a position that it's not allowed to go to. It's hitting its limit. When a joint hits its limit, you can see it gets highlighted in red, and in addition on the left, it says too far and highlights the input in red as well to denote the J5 is the one that has an issue here. Okay, so controlling this simulated robot is pretty cool, but what are all these other buttons and how do we actually control a real robot? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to go over to the motor control interface and I'm gonna actually start playing with this. If I spin this around, you can see all it's doing is spinning a simulated motor. This isn't actually connected to a motor yet. So let's do that. So what I've done is actually went ahead and turned on the software running on the Raspberry Pi to boot up the control for the robot arm. In this case, I'm running the iGUS Rebel robot. Because I've done that, we can now see that in the dropdown, there is an option to select Robot 1. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now that I've selected Robot 1, you can see on the right side of the screen, we have a readout of all of our joints. The first joint through the sixth joint in the case of the iGUS Rebel. If we look, we can see some information about that joint. It's ready. It has not been enabled. It has not been zeroed. It is not moving. We can see the current goal position, the set position, the current position, and the position of the encoder. Those will become important in a little bit. In addition to the locations of the motor, you can see that there's some current, the velocity, the interval we're sending, the messages on the CAN network, voltage, motor temperature, what direction it's going, and all sorts of error information at the bottom. So what we're gonna do is instead of looking at all of these joints, we're actually gonna select one specific one. Let's start with J0, which is the first joint. You can see that once we've selected a single joint, we now only see the information for that joint. Now, if I try to reset and enable this motor, you can see we have an error down here saying no zero. 
That's letting us know it doesn't want us to try to move the motor until we've zeroed it. And you can also see that it has not been zeroed. If I zero the motor, you can see that now the zeroed flag is set to yes. I can go ahead and reset the errors. That zero error went away, and the motor went into the motor not enabled state, which is the state it should be in before you enable it. If I enable the motor, which you can actually hear in the background, I can actually start moving that. Let's move it to 20 degrees. You can see when we moved that to 20 degrees, the robot in the real world moved to 20 degrees, and in addition, the simulated motor moved to 20 degrees. I can send that back to zero, or I can hit home to send it back to zero as well. Now let's say I want to send it to, let's say, negative 45 degrees. And I want this to be the new zero position. So in the case of the IGUS Rebel, we want to be careful to make sure we don't send the motors in locations we don't want it to go. So zeroing doesn't make this zero per se, but it actually sets a reference point. So if I hit zero, then you can see the current location of the set position and the actual current location reported by the motor is now zero. But the encoder position from absolute zero, the actual zero point in the motor, is negative 44 degrees. You can see that represented by the purple line here. If I reset and enable that motor, I can actually send this back to like one degree. And you can see that that is actually the correct location of the motor. The reference point is actually at that 45 degree offset noted by the purple, but our actual location is still known by the absolute zero position. Now zeroing is one way you can do that, but another way you can do this is actually by hitting the reference button. Let's go back to that 45 degrees, or rather negative 45 degrees, and let's take a look at our position readout on the right side. We can see we're at negative 44.95 on the encoder position, but our current position is about zero. Now what happens if we click this reference button? The reference button made it such that the encoder position and the actual position of the motor are the same. You can see now if I reset the errors and enable the motor, and I send it to zero degrees, it sends it to true zero. The encoder position is zero, and the current position is zero. So that's the difference between referencing and zeroing the motor. And you can see that noted by the color-coded lines on the screen. Now, in addition to those, you can also query for information about the motor. Down here, you can actually query for specific parameters based on their, uh, the documentation that iGUS provides you. In this case, let's go ahead and read the uh, firmware version. I believe that is 01. So the firmware version is noted here. Now, what's this section down below? Well, the section down below actually shows the position and the velocity where the blue arrow is the set velocity, what we're telling it to go to, and the yellow is the actual velocity. So if I were to, for example, let's send this to negative 90. And now we're gonna wait a second, and we're gonna send it all the way over to 90. And remember, I have acceleration enabled on this case. So if we look, we can see that the blue and yellow lines are pretty much matching up. The blue will obviously be more, uh, more uh, per perfect as it's our set velocity, but the yellow line is what we actually did. So you can see we wanted to go 30 degrees per second there, and it lined up pretty well. If I were to, for example, shut off acceleration with this toggle over here, so it was on, I now shut it off, and let's send it back to negative 90, it's going to cruise there much faster. And in this case, because we did not have acceleration turned on, you'll see that in the chart, it's a little bit flatter, a uh, little bit more of a square wave, and there's no acceleration or deceleration. So you can see that can be very useful when debugging where the motor is and how fast it's going. Let's go ahead and re-enable acceleration and send that back home.
When we're done, we can go ahead and we can disable the motor. All right, so now we've shown you how to use the motor controller, but how do we control all of the motors at once? Well, if we go back to the robot section of this site, we can actually see that we can connect to a robot here as well. I'm going to go ahead and select robot one. Just like in the case of the motor page, I can see a readout of all the different joints on the right side of the screen here. Now, just like before, we need to make sure that we put the motors into an adequate state such that we can run the robot. The first step to doing that is to zero out all the motors. If I go up here and hover over this, you can see it says zero robot. This will zero out all the motors in the robot. If I click that, you're going to start to see all of the joints get the zeroed flag set to yes with a green dot. Uh, now that I've done that, you can see that all these have lag motor not enabled in the error code section. To get rid of these errors, we need to reset the errors on all the motors. We can actually come up here and hover over this, which shows that this button will reset all the errors. If I click that, we can see that all of the motors went into the motor not enabled state. That is the state before you enable the motor. Now that we have all the motors in the state, we can come up here and finally click this last button, which will enable the robot. It'll enable all the motors individually, such that we can start moving it around. When I do that, you're going to hear some clicks on the iGUS, noting that the motors are starting to become enabled. You can see that all the motors are now enabled. You note that by seeing that the enabled is green and set to yes, and if I scroll all the way down, we can see that's true for all of the different motors. You can go ahead and test to make sure things are working. For example, if I come to J5 and send it to 20 degrees, that joint should spin to 20 degrees, and it did. So now that we know that the motor is spinning, uh, we can actually start to do the same things we did at the beginning of this video and send this robot to a location. I'm going to use my arrow key and just bump it. And what that did is it sent the robot in the real world to that location. If I were to, for example, type in a location like maybe 50, uh, you know, negative, uh, or let's do 20, and we'll go, I don't know, 60 on the Z, and we'll point it in the X direction, I can hit the go, and the robot just went to that location in the real world as well. If I want to, I can hit the home button, and that will send the robot to standing up straight in its home position. You can see that as the robot's moving around, you see the readouts on the right changing. I can, for example, change J1 and send it to 30 degrees. And you can see slowly the amps going up, the velocity going up, the position changing, and that went to 30 degrees. I can go ahead and send the robot home. And that reads about zero degrees as well. So that's how you can control the iGUS robot from this interface using the robot page and the motor control page individually. In addition to controlling the robot as a whole and enabling the robot as a whole on this page, it might be also nice to control each individual motor here as well. So next to the controls for each motor, you can see you have similar buttons here. This can home it, this can zero it, this can reset the errors, and this can enable it. That gives you the opportunity to play around and if anything goes wrong and you need to reset an error or you want to zero the motor in a different location, you can do that from here as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and disable the robot, which will disable each individual motor. You can see that the red enabled on J0 here notes that that motor is no longer enabled. And if I try to move it, it won't go anywhere anymore. Now I want to note there's also some cool things you can do with the software that don't actually have to do with controlling a real robot but also can be used for educational purposes. As you can see, we have an arm here on the screen that's fully configurable. First, I wanna show you that you can actually choose a different robot. In this case, if I wanna choose the AR4, I can choose to control that. Now, the AR4 has different kinematics, which can be clearly seen on the screen here. In addition, there's an example one with pretty plain values, and that's why all the joints look like they're the same distance apart, because they are. Now, if I go back to the iGUS, you can see that if I scroll down, I actually have some toggles here that I can go turn on and off to view different perspectives of this robot. For example, I can shut off the main grid or turn it on. 
I can hide or show each individual joint grid. I can hide the robot, maybe hide the main grid, and now I see only the links that connect each joint. If I take these sliders, I can grow that length. So now the kinematics of this arm is changing such that the third joint here, noted by V3, is longer. If I turn the robot back on, you can see that now we have a much longer joint here. I can also choose to shut off the robot and show kind of a kinematic diagram, which I can play with all of these different toggles to get that, or what I can do is simply click this button, which is the skeleton button. Now you can see we have the kinematic diagram for this robot arm. I can go ahead and grab and I can spin it around and see all the different joints in action. And what's super cool is in this interface, I can continue to use my arrow keys and move that robot around to see how it behaves and all the different frames behave. I can go ahead and send it to a location and then I can reset the view back to its initial state. Finally, if you're ever having trouble trying to visualize how these frames work, how the robot works, and you want to play around with different kinematics, there are two other parts of this UI you can look at. The first is Framer, which is just a frame that you can send to different locations to see how it behaves. And you can click this drop down, which changes from an XYZ rotation to a ZXZ rotation. And I can reset that view back to its initial state. If I grab these sliders, I can move them around each axis. So in this case, I'm moving the X axis, the red one. I'm going to move it around the Y, the green one, and finally around the Z. If I change this to ZXZ, you can see I can rotate around the Z, then the X, and then the new Z. And let's go ahead and reset that. I'm currently working on a builder where you can actually define a kinematic diagram. And as you define that kinematic diagram, it will actually put the Denevit Hartenberg parameters on the right side of the screen here. But that's still a work in progress. And finally, there's a cookbook where you can build out those different actions that you were seeing in the other view on the robot simulator. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys get a chance to download this software, play with it. If you have the AR robot, check out some of my other videos where I use the same software to control that. And if you do happen to get your hands on the iGUS robot, all you need to do is provide it with 24 volt power and have a CAN adapter to a Raspberry Pi. You can run this software and you too can control the iGUS Rebel. I finally want to note that this is actually deployed, uh, which I will have a link in the description of this video. You can go to this URL and if you go there, you can see this is a fully deployed running application where you can play around with the simulator from anywhere in the world and you don't even have to download it. Eventually, the idea is that you will be able to, I'll be able to actually host this somewhere where you can connect and control robots remotely from anywhere in the world. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.